I got a question for you. Are you living life? Or is life living you? How bad do you want to be successful? Are you ready to level up in life? Are you ready to go to that next level? Are you sick of being average? I ask you again, are you living life? Or is life living you? This August 4th, Orlando, Florida. Less than unstoppable. The kickoff tour. I'll be teaching a four hour, life changing seminar on the art of greatness. Arise, champion. This event will sell out. Get your tickets now. Billy Allsbrooks live August 4th, Orlando, Florida. Be there. Get your tickets now at BillyAllsbrooks.com backslash events. Losers bow to obstacles. Champions make obstacles bow to them. That's the difference. Excuses destroy the credibility of those who give them. This year, it's all about identity. Who do you want to be? I was born a champion. Raised a champion. I got a champion in my bloodline. And all I will ever be is a champion. Now when I say champion, I'm not just referring to sports. I'm talking about being a champion in every area of your life. Winning in your business, your health, your marriage, your relationships, your spiritual life. Being a champion is the whole package. You gotta bring that same mindset into every environment that you enter. Ain't no such thing as a part-time champion. Who do you wanna be? See, success starts with self-awareness, understanding your identity. Here, this year, a theme, and they own it. This is the year for your healing. This is the year of promotion. This is the year of abundance, of execution, of discipline, of focus, of marriage restoration. Whatever you want it to be, define it. Successful people start with identity, and then outcomes, and then goals. It's hard to breathe life into a dream when you're choking on excuses. Some seek to be discovered. Others grind until they discover themselves. Who do you want to be? If you don't make that decision, the world will make that decision for you. This year, no more excuses. Setting New Year's resolutions without discipline will only prolong your enslavement to mediocrity. Anybody, listen to me, anybody out there can be successful, but not all. Focus always seems to gravitate But from my experience The doing is not the core issue It's not the root of struggle It's the identity Who do you want to be? Losers bow to obstacles Champions make obstacles bow to them That's the difference Losers keep all their focus on the problem The issue, the situation, the challenge Champions guard the gates of their mind First, they tell their problem how big Success cannot be produced with a mindset that doesn't support it. First, you gotta get your mind right. Next, you gotta get your grind right. Then go out and get your life right. To change your behavior, we must first address the mindset that produces it. Our life is just the sum total of our most dominant thought patterns. So this year will be defined by how many days you can consistently think like a champion. Now people will say, Billy, you are wrong. Success is about taking action. But what the masses don't understand is, once you align your mind with success, the actions will follow. Action is the fruit of thoughts. Get your mind right. See, people trying to do the actions without changing who they are on the inside.
inside Now you could do that for a week You could do that for two weeks, 15 days That's why they say 15 days into the year People have already broke their resolutions Because see they trying to act their way into success You can't act your way into success You gotta think your way there Now let me reiterate my point When people ask me what should they eat, I reply, who do you want to be? Let's get the identity right first. You get the identity right first, everything else will take care of itself. If you study the lives of greats, the Elon Musk, the Steve Jobs, the Richard Branson, the Jeff Bezos, the Bill Gates, the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, they're all in different fields, but they all have one thing in common. They know who they are. Self-awareness. to mindset. The most dominant thinking pattern shall dictate the fate of one's potential. Discipline is the fruit of the champion's mindset. The masses are merely satellites of the status quo, where champions become the gravity that puts the world in orbit around them. See, to sell a dream to the world, you gotta first believe it yourself. If you study great coaches, great leaders, the first thing they do when they take over a program or a business is they address the culture, the mindset of the entity, whether that's a team or a business, a nonprofit, whatever. Vision is the genesis of all greatness. And vision is just an extension of self-awareness of who God is and who God made you to be and what God called you to do. The reason many of you out there are struggling is because you're out of position. You're not doing what God made you to do, what he called you to do. You're in the wrong profession. Inside, you know where you should be. You chase the money. Stop chasing the money. See, the money is the fruit of the calling. When you're in your calling, the money will follow. That's where the blessing is. Stop asking God to bless what you're doing and do what God has already blessed. Don't get confused. Just because you admire somebody's calling and what they're doing does not mean that you are anointed to do it. The best way to impact the world is to be yourself. If you want to be successful, start with authenticity, then build everything else in your life around it. That's the secret to success. This is the year of simplification. Don't overcomplicate things. Mastering the basics is what produces greatness. Now I gotta keep it real with you. This year, there's gonna be some times if you're chasing massive success that you're gonna feel uncomfortable. But success requires embracing the uncertainty. The impossible becomes possible for those who dare to embrace the unconventional. To go to the top this year, you will have to think outside the box. Losers bow to obstacles. Champions make obstacles bow to them. Now when you get finished listening to this message, I want you to pull out your goals for this year. I want you to take a pen and draw a line through every single one of them. Then I want you to pull out another piece of paper. And at the very top, I want you to write, who do I want to be? Start with your outcome. Get alone somewhere. I want you to dig deep with this question. See, questions will take you wherever you want to go in life. Wherever you want to go, all you got to do is find the right question that will take you there. You want personal transformation? You want to change your life? This is the question to do it. Who do you want to be? And when you truly awaken to that question, then you set the goals. For now, your goal is to figure out who you want to be. This is why so many professional athletes or lottery winners go broke. See, they think it's about the money. They aim for the money. See, it's not the money that you want. It's the financial freedom that you want. That's why when they get the money, they can't keep it because they don't have the identity to sustain it. Who do you want to be? I close out with this. Let us enjoy the blessing this year and not get lost in it. God is not the author of confusion. So I pray that he gives you divine clarity and revelation as to who he has created and designed you to be so that you may step into that calling with boldness this year. So I'm gonna close this
message out with the word And be not conformed to this world But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind That ye may prove what is that good And acceptable and perfect will of God Romans 12 2 I'm Billy Alls Brooks, blessed and unstoppable To God be the glory Breathe Well Live Blessed and unstoppable Join the movement Get your books and t-shirts now so much of what I think about is how people love to save time and how much I value your time and how much empathy I have for your time. And so we are doing more mashups of some of our best keynotes. You just might not have an hour and a half to get it all. And so I'm super excited about this little mashup right here. And I'm also very excited because this keynote also led to the, uh, the deck, the PDF, the, the presentation uh, about how I make content in today's world. So this is all very meta for me. Uh, this was a, obviously a very special day that has, that has led to the ability for me to communicate to you about uh, ways you could be doing it for yourself, but most of all, wanted to make sure that all of you got the themes of this special talk. Positivity and offense always wins. Historically, always. The reason I spend my time on talking about this is not because I want to be a motivational speaker and fluffy fluff fluff and rah rah rah. It's because it's the thing. It's the thing. Life is binary. It's either offense or defense. When you bet on optimism, when you're on the offense, you do something super duper interesting. You start suffocating excuses. If you ask me the number one thing I wake up every morning and thank that my parents did, is I never saw either one of them complain. And it basically created learned behavior for me. I am incapable of actually complaining. And that has become the foundation of my success. Yes, it is absolutely difficult for all of us. We all have stuff. Do I believe some people have it? Do I believe a white male has more privilege? Of course, yes I do. Here's my problem. My problem is if anybody has ever done it with your circumstances, then you have nothing to talk about in the mindset that I want for you to win. Everybody's in a slump. Like everybody's got adversity. There's always something. To me, somebody's always got it worse. There's 7.7 billion people. And unless I'm in some weird little cage in some fourth world country, that means I'm not in last place. Which means I have nothing to complain about. Like, you live in America. Yeah. What are you complaining about? (laughs) We have it the best. And all I see is people sitting around and dwelling around what they don't have instead of focusing on what they do have. A lot of us were born with what we were born with, right? Like, you're only so pretty, you're only so smart, you're only so fast, you're only, like, you're only what you are. It's like a great poker player, right? A great poker player doesn't need the best hand every time to win, it's how she or he navigates with that hand. We're not gonna change who we are or where we were born or to whom we were born with. But no matter where you are in the life cycle right now, we all have the opportunity to start looking at it a little different. And to me, very frankly, I just think we spend an enormous amount of time on dumb when we have ambition to do so much more. When I was nine years old and opened the door for an elderly woman at a McDonald's, she reacted as if I won the Nobel Peace Prize. What my mom did was super smart. She overreacted on everything that I was doing that was a good human trait and she held me accountable for things that didn't matter like grades she didn't let me complete like she punished I got punished four times a year every year from the time I was in third grade until my senior year of high school my mom built huge self-esteem in me and I feel like the biggest reason I am who I am today to everybody is because I feel so guilty and so grateful for what she did for me that I want to do it for everybody else I promise you If you wanna be pumped professionally and personally, there's one thing that will drive you to the biggest success. It's called self-awareness. And I want that for every person because let me tell you something, it's the best. It's such a good place to be. When you can get to that place, amazing happens. You know why? Because you stop being scared. When you're not scared, you do When you're scared, you do nothing. Like, what are you scared of? Like what, your dad's gonna be like, I told you you're a loser? What are you fearful of? Like, your sister making fun of you because she's got a better job? Cool, like, don't forget my friends, 
You could be winning 28 nothing at halftime and lose. So your older sibling that's got a great job could be a crackhead next year. <laughs> could, could, because he's had a whole facade the whole time and, and he's actually insecure inside and something went wrong at the office and he starts doing coke on the side. Like, guys, don't you understand how this is played? This is why I'm petrified of eighth place trophies. If you grow up where everybody gets an eighth place trophy, you're actually scared of losing. Losing is real. I love, I swear on my kid's health, I'm obsessed with losing. I love losing because I know exactly what you're thinking about my loss and I can't wait to stick it in your face when I come back. You have to figure out whose opinion is dictating your actions beside yourself. Like it is in my mindset that literally every negative thing that happens to me is my fault. Literally your ability to be the bigger man and woman in every situation, even though nine out of 10 times you may be right, is the variable of your success both within an organization and compounded when you go out into the real world and this takes me back to where I started. Please understand the following. Being nice is ROI positive. One of the biggest reasons a lot of you don't do the right thing is because you expect somebody to do that in return after you do it. And that expectation of, the reason I'm good is because I give with zero expectation return. A lot what works for me is I do it for the right reasons, I'm all in, I don't mind if I lose, I actually weirdly prefer it, and if I do great for you, and then I need you in a year, and you don't deliver, I'm cool with that too. I'm empathetic. Maybe, you're, maybe you didn't get it, maybe you're not a good person, maybe you've got some on your mind right now that didn't allow you to come through. I think the expectation of others and the opinions of others are disproportionately guiding your life and I think that you will end up regretting that in your older years. Thank you. That was great. To book Billy Allsbrooks to speak at your next event. Call 407-310-3275. Billy, I just want to let you know that we're very blessed to have you here today. You know, it's been uh, a long time coming. I've been listening to videos for for, uh, for months now uh, at the gym and, and in my personal life. It's been helping me a lot. And your passion to God, to turn your life around, um, you're really a role model for all of us at Planner Griffin. So I'm really glad that you're Thank here. Thank you, man. We'll learn so much from you, man. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, what you can tell us about your past. Because uh, you went through some uh, dark side, you know, and we all do, you know, myself and everybody. Uh, how, how can you come out? What's some of the, the things you can tell anybody to get out of the, the darkness, basically? Well, basically, you, you've got to change the vision that you see in your mind. You've got to get a vision for the victory. Um, for some, some of them uh, watching might know my story, but I rapped 17 years, was in the music business. Um, had a big void on the inside that I tried to fill with the world, the money, the fame, the women, all of the accolades, all that stuff. I tried to fill my life with that. Um, and no matter how high I went, I felt even more empty. You know, chasing the wrong things will take you to the wrong place. And, and that's what I was doing for years. And the turning point in my life was when my, my dad passed away in front of me. Then I knew life was precious, I knew life was real. You know, before that time I thought, you know, nothing, you know, when you're young, you're bold, you're, you're a risk taker, all this stuff, and you think, hey, I got the you know, rest of my life, I don't need to worry about anything. And then boom, life hits you, you know, with a blind, blind shot, knocks you down on the mat. And um, it made me re-examine everything that, that I had done up to that point in my life. And uh, he died um, unexpectedly in front of me, which, which triggered PTSD and, and panic attacks in me. Seven years after, um, he passed, man, I was still struggling with the effects of that. It basically robbed everything that I had built up for 17 years in my music business. It robbed every bit of it. All the money, the fame, the friends, everything was stripped away and it was just me. That was it, you know. Um, but in that dark time, man, I found myself, you know. And it's like when, when there's a moment of desperation, that's God's invitation to come in. And I invited him in because I was at the end of me and I said, you know, this is how my life is going to be. It's going to be this dark cycle every single day unless you come in and hear me because I don't know what to do. I've done everything the doctors told me to do. I've done everything the therapist told me to do. I've read every book that I could get my hands on and I'm still here. I don't know what else to do. And uh, I, I made a...
pact with God. I said, you know, if, if you heal me of this, I will go out and I will tell the world who did it. And he honored that promise. He gave me a, a Bible verse, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now that was running contrary to the vision the enemy gave me. The, the panic attacks were saying I was gonna die, my life is over, the best days are gone, and all this stuff like that, right? The, you got cancer, you're gonna have a stroke like your father, you're gonna have a heart attack, all this stuff. That vision that God gave me ran contrary to that one. Now I had a choice, choose fear and doubt, or choose faith and healing and life. And I chose faith, healing, and life. And I started believing in that promise. And every time these panic attacks would come on, I would fight them back one by one now. Because now I had something that I could hold on to, this, this promise, this verse. So these panic attacks would come on to me and they'd say, oh, you know, you twitch, my arm would twitch. And I'd think, oh, I'm having a stroke, like my dad. Because this is what happened to my dad. He had a, you know, he twitched and boom. So it would send me to the hospital every time, every time, every time. Until I got equipped with this, this, this new verse, this new way of seeing things, this new vision for my life. So when this stuff would come on me, I'd say, no, 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 no. God said, I got, he got a plan for me. Uh-uh. So I would start talking back. This is the first time that I took the mic from the enemy in my mind. Yeah. I took the mic back. See, so when my dad died, before, before my dad died, I was on the mic. Mentally, I had the mic. When he died in front of me, I gave the mic to the enemy. And the enemy spoke to me for seven years. Then I took the mic back and I started speaking life, what God had told me to do. And day by day, I slowly, it wasn't, a, wasn't an overnight thing, right? seven years, so. man, seven yeah. years. I went from being on the stage in front of 20,000 people yeah. with the music to being in a room, in a corner, in my bedroom for two weeks at a time because I was too scared to get out of the room, thinking I was going to have a panic attack. So from 20,000 people watching you on stage right. to the corner of your room. Right. And you versus you at this point, you mentioned right. a lot of things right. about this to, to trying to change your mind, basically right. to change your mindset, because mindset in your videos, again, it is everything, right. where you think you are, that's who you can become, and uh, right. tell, tell us a little bit about the, the vision that you have now from, from that point, you know, when you're in the corner of your room, what, what are you thinking? Everything? I'm thinking at that point in time, it's over. I mean, as I mentioned to you earlier, I, I said my last words over 30 times, thinking I was going to die. When I, these panic attacks would come on, I'd move, tell my wife, hey, you know, I love you, sorry, whatever. And I, I literally thought that was my last word. And I did this over and over and over. So, man, I was living in a constant state of trauma and fear. And to get that mic back, to get that vision that God gave me, man, it just empowered me. And every day I gained a little bit more of my life back, a little bit more of my life back, a little bit more of my identity back. You know, he started planting things in me, one little piece at a time, what, what I'm doing now. He gave me one little piece at a time. It wasn't like, oh, you're going to be a speaker and you're going to go do that. No, 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 no. It was like, okay, I, I want you to write a book, you know? And I had been flirting with that, you know? And then later on, I, I got the book finished. And then it was like, you know those motivational videos you used to listen to when you had panic attacks and you were, you were walking outside every day having these, these panic attacks and the therapist told you to listen to these videos? You remember what you heard? Okay, you, you wrote songs for years, you produced for years, you were on a mic for years, you know what that is. And now you know this other. Okay, you can combine these two and you can go out and tell the world that, that I healed you and I'll heal them too. So like he started un unveiling all these little things, man, one at a time. And as I mentioned earlier, when I rapped, I had this idea in my head with this microphone, I could change my life. If I was good, I could get whatever I wanted, right? But God revealed to me behind this mic that I not only could, could change my life, but I could change the world. And that was totally different. I got behind that mic 17 years and never thought that way. For 17 years, I looked at that mic and I never thought that way, but it all changed. One day I was doing a video, um, like my sixth or seventh video that I had put on YouTube. And I still hadn't figured it out. I'm still playing with it. I don't know it's a career. I don't know it's any of that stuff. Just before anything blew up. And I'm standing in front of that mic and the light switch went off. It said, you can change the world right here. And then it was like another anointing came on me. More power came on me. More intensity arose in me. And then when I spoke with the mic, I started speaking with authority. I wasn't speaking from my head no more or my heart no more. I was speaking from the spirit. And I thought every time I opened my mouth, man, this power is going out, you know, to change the world. And, and now I got a way to fight back. Seven years, I didn't know how to fight back. It was like the enemy had me. I had my arms, you know, tied behind my back, and he's just beating on me every day, right? And I was, you know, I'm a fighter. I grew up as a, a martial artist, black belt, national champion, uh, one state champion, four years in a row, trained with the Olympic team, all that. So I knew about fighting. So when I got in this situation, I'm like, how do you fight your mind? It's not a person. Like, how do I get in there and scrap it out? It's me that I'm fighting with, you know? So then when I got in front of that mic, it was like, okay, this is how 
you're gonna fight back. This is what I want you to do. And then I was like, oh, all those years I couldn't fight. Like I didn't have nothing. Yeah. To, I didn't have no. Yeah, right now, I had no way to Amazing. defend myself. Yeah. And I'm like, you, oh Lord, you just anointed my mouth, and you put this this microphone in front of me, and, and you're giving me a world audience to do it. I'm finna come hard because I remember all those times when I when I was crying around that block every day. You know, every single day I'd go around there just tears, man. You know. Lord, why? You know, cussing at God, mad at God, numb at God, silent to God. Like every emotion you could do, man, I, I had it. So when he had he healed me and started to bring me out, man, I took it very serious. You know, because I know there's somebody like me on the other side of that mic. On the other side of those videos, there's people thinking about suicide. There's people thinking about giving up. They got cancer, they only, you know, got a death sentence where they said they're only going to live six weeks. These are the people listening to me. So I'm like, oh, that's me. I'm talking to me now, but now I get to talk me seven years ago to that same person that was, you know, in, in drama back then. So I get on that mic now and I just rock thinking of, of me going around that block. It, it's you know? amazing. You, you said something about this earlier when we were talking. You said, I'm so patient. I'm so patient. And you mm -hmm. see, when you're talking, it says, okay, you did higher level competition in martial arts. Right. You were a rapper, so God gives you two avenues to perfect your skills. Right, martial right. art to be competition. Right. Mar uh, uh, the, the, the rap into your voice. Yeah, the so artist, deep. creativity. My God, man, every time we listen to to your voice on YouTube, uh, it, it's always, it, I know right away it's you, it's really this thing, so, and now it gets you here, how, how, how's your patience and your skills and the trust in God, it's been, it seems like it's been your foundation for right. the whole time. In my music career, everything had to be right now, you know, right now, right now, right now. I had no patience, you know, and I burned a lot of bridges, made a lot of mistakes. My passion was right, but I didn't have anybody, you know, mentoring me and coaching me and guiding me and, you know, took me under the wing and said, hey, you know, it'll be okay, play the long-term game. Nobody was telling me that. And my, and my world is get it now, get it while it's hot. That's the, that's the life we live. But now it's like the long-term game. Once I shift to the long-term game, man, it's so empowering. Because now I'm, I'm principle-oriented, man, not visually-oriented. Like what I see in the world, no, it's what it's going to be. You know, uh, success is a war over the invisible, you know, and it requires vision and the faith to see what could be, can be, and will be when you water it with grind. So I know if I just tap into these principles that I learned during the seven year struggle, that I studied trying to conquer my own uh, mental stuff, these principles, I know if I tap into them, they are guaranteed to produce fruit. So I need not be shaken by the world if it doesn't reflect yet what I want it to be because I'm going to project so hard out of me and my vision and my mind and communicate it and speak life so hard and so consistent that that world is gonna fold and bend to what I want it to be. So now I can play the long-term game. And then a patient man or woman becomes powerful. They become magnetic and people will gather around that because they know and sense something is different. You know, most of the world don't have that uh, long-term game mentality. They have the microwave. Let me put it in 15 seconds. I hope I'll be successful. Everybody's like yeah, this now, right? Yeah, yeah, no, quick, no, exactly. Now with the social media, exactly. everything's online. Exactly. We get a like on Facebook is a little a fulfillment inside. You know, right. you play the long game and you believe in something greater that the dots somehow, right, they right. will connect. Because if you look at your past, that means you, you are today, right. which is uh, amazing. God and, is good. God is good. You told me about this earlier, too. says there's, uh, there's different leadership. There's uh, uh, motivational leaders, right. there's uh, motivational uh, uh, speakers, and then you told me you're a motivational artist, right. which is unbelievable. From your brand to your, your voice to your inspiration, uh, right. tell me a little bit more about what that means to you. The, the motivational artist aspect is I used to be the songwriter, music producer. It's in my blood since I was one years old. I, I mentioned to you earlier, um, my grandmother had a music store, my mother a um, music teacher, my father in the Music Hall of Fame for playing music. So I had this music and creativity vibe in me from day one. And when I got out of rap and that seemed to be lacking, like speaking and, you know, reciting things and like that, that, that fed my spirit on the motivational side because that was a part of me. But this artist and, and creative side was, there was a void there. Right? So I kept, I kept in prayer about it. God revealed to me in Revelation, like, look, take the poetry, take the songwriting, take the producing that you used to do over there and bring it into what I've got you doing. That's what it's for. You know, you've got, you got this writing skill. Uh, if you give it to me, I will harness it and I will leverage it and I will send it out in the world. So I'm like, now I'm resonating on all levels on my inside. You know, everything is being tapped into. And I'm, I'm on fire with passion because there's so many things in what I do um, I'm passionate about. You know, whether it's, it's, it's positivity, self-help, I read that all day long. So I'm, that's in me, right? Um, the speaking aspect and having a voice is me. And then the writing aspect, the creating and, and um, getting up every day and not knowing what's going to be on that paper. But having that ability, oh, I just love to watch something um, from a blank piece of paper 
um, go from the blank piece of paper to the dry erase board to the chalkboard to in reality, man. It's, it's amazing. It's a, it's a euphoria and a high to watch the whole uh, creation process, man. So I've made creativity a foundation of what I'm doing. So not just um, speaking, doing motivational speaking, man. I'm trying to incorporate this other unique right. thing that's on the inside of me that needs to be expressed. So that's why I'm marrying the two. I'm still in the process of learning how to blend these and marry these, but they are coming together. Eventually, this thing will be uh, one one unique product of its own, yeah. but it's, it still Nobody takes chiseling. Doing this. You right, know, we have right. Motivational leaders, motivational right. speakers, speakers right. but artists, you know, and again, like in the gym or, or wherever we're doing, we listen to your uh, products all the time on YouTube because it's so different and it reach out to me and I know to the team, the Monarch, so it's a, it's, it's a very uh, blessing to have you here. You said something about how to become successful, the consistency to do it over and over, right. to believe into something else and opportunities. Uh, what's some of your opportunities that you have that really uh, help you uh, maybe focus on, on one thing? Seems like you're very focused now on this motivational um, uh, artist leadership. Uh, what can you tell us, like how, how, what should we focus on to become successful, basically? You've got to find out what your calling is, what you're most passionate about, and that you have to build everything around that. If there's no passion, there's going to be no energy, no intensity, um, no power to go to that next level. You see a lot of people, like with me, in the rap game, I kept hitting this ceiling. Like, I, I did probably more in the rap game than 95% of the people that were in it. You know, I had multiple songs on the radio, hit Billboard, had my own radio show produced for Gold and Platinum Max. That put me here, but I wasn't striving for, for to beat the 95. I was just striving to beat number one, right? But I kept hitting this ceiling and I couldn't understand why. And then later on, I realized what it was is I had great success in music because that was part of me. And that's part of my calling, which I'm doing now. But I wasn't all the way in the calling. I was just outside it. So I was producing all this fruit because I'm close. But when I got in my own center of my calling, that's when things took off. And it's not a strain. It's not like in music, I was having to physically, you know, we talk about grind, but I was grinding against the grain. So it's like I was, I had a crazy work ethic, but it, it, it was like every time I'd go up, two steps back, you know what I mean? The, like something was holding me back and I couldn't figure out what it was. But in this now, when you get in the center of your calling, man, I'm not saying you won't have struggles in the calling, but it's like you, you're on this other, other, other level of function, man, a deeper and a higher level of power that you are um, projecting. And it just makes everything different. So even when you have the struggle, it's a fun struggle because, you, you, man, this is what I love to do. If this struggle, I will figure it out in my calling, you know. So, man, it's just been amazing. So I, I suggest anybody that's listening um, to find what it is, what role uh, in the company or whatever they're doing, to find what they really love and build everything in their life around that thing. You know, when you get up in the morning, you should be excited to get up. And when you have to close your eyes, you should be mad that you got to go to sleep. You know, and if you can get to that point in whatever you, you're doing, you will be successful because that becomes magnetic and, and powerful and uh, people just notice something different about you. You know? it's, it's amazing what you're saying. You know, again, it's uh, you get my heart uh, going faster because uh, I'm really passionate. Uh, a lot of similarities about uh, getting other people becoming better and I feel that's your you know your center now is right. you want to help others to become better to understand that they can accomplish more than what they are right now you're just right. beginning use your past your, your your dark side your good side to become better right. uh, when you have struggle now like you, you know like everyone do you go back to your dark side to say okay I'm not going back there or you go like okay I'm building on something or you don't even have a dark side anymore um it's a combination the, the things of the dark, like the grind, the hustle, they're not taking the no for the answer and the power and stuff that I did, but it's rooted in a righteous uh, undertone. You know, you can, all the grind and all the stuff, what I was doing over there negative, was rooted in the wrong things. I took the core values out and replaced them with good things, and now the things that were, were wrong and bad are now have become weapons of good. So I, I, it's the same process, but the motive behind them, the heart behind them is totally different. You know, so I still grind. I still go out there and do all yeah, that. Yeah. I would still smash if I had to smash, but I smash knowing, first of all, making sure I'm in line with God, you know, seeking his guidance first. And then if it's time to smash, I know God's behind me and I will smash and do whatever I got to do to break through barriers. 
you know, the, whatever's in the way. You have a commitment now. Right. To God. You committed. Right. Exactly. That's it. I devoted promise. with it. Yeah, so right. That's it. You got to do it. Every decision you're making it. every day is right. because, okay, I promise God right. that we commitment. So your decisions are very easy now. Right. Everything you do, it's not like, ah, oh, shit, oh, that's bad. No, no, no. Right. Is it what my promise is? I'm going back to that line all the time. Right. You can keep straight. It's an absolute certainty. Like now, like when I was music, I was like, you know, I tell everybody, I was constantly trying to sell the dream. Like, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. I wasn't quite sure, I mean, but I was saying it. I was like, I gotta make it, I gotta make it. I don't have any other choice. With this, it's an absolute certainty. I didn't choose this. I didn't say I am gonna be no motivational speaker, man. You know, one day I was in this men's group at church, at the group because I'm having the panic attacks and I'm trying anything. I'm like, I gotta go to this group every Monday. And uh, one night, uh, the guy comes up to me, he's leading the group, he's like, I'm not gonna be able to, um, be here next week, can you teach? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, now I've never done any speaking. Yeah. I've been rapping, but there was music and it was all choreo. But to stand up there for an hour and a half, two hours with no script, you know, I was like, I don't want to do that, right? <laughs> I, I don't see myself doing that because I never saw myself yeah. as a speaker. And at that point, you had panic attack. Right, I'm oh, still having so that too. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. But then something in me just said, just do it. I, so I, I said, okay, I'll do it, you know? I, I studied all week, was nervous and all that. I was like, how am I going to do this? Um, but I get up there that night, I say like two words, you know, to the group. And then it was like a nuclear bomb went off on the inside of me. Boom, the fire rose. I had found where I had belonged, what I had been searching for. I didn't know. But when I spoke, man, it was like, like fire just coming out. And people were receiving it. And, and you could tell the yeah. energy, yeah, it was reacting and responding and resonating with it. And when I got done, I spoke for two hours, actually went over. I went two and a half hours and nobody left. Yeah, yeah. And then when we got done, we talked another hour. Everybody was still staying. And you know, uh, on a Monday night at church, staying at 10, 30, 11 is not normal. So we were, I mean, we had to had the place lit up. So when I got home, I said, um, told my wife, I was like, I stumbled onto something, but I don't know what it is. I'm an entrepreneur. What is that business? You know, I didn't know, like, how do you, what is the speed? I don't, I don't see any leverage. I don't see the, you know. So I just kind of dismissed it. Oh, that was fun. You know, that was a hobby. Yeah, that's cool, you know. But I knew the energy was different. I never felt that way. I spoke, you know, 17 years on the mic rapping in front of 20,000, but I never felt that way that I did in front of those 30 people. Something was different, you know. And a couple of weeks later, I got asked again because the guy was having issues. I went up there, same thing. Boom, bomb went off. And I said, you know, this is crazy, you know. But I still didn't know. It was a year or two later before I even considered that because I still couldn't figure, like, is this a profession? You know, I, I don't... I'm not really, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. What, you know, I don't understand this. You know, I know that's a hobby. Like, a, you know, teaching at church, loving people, loving your community. But I didn't see it as a profession. You know, like this is just service, community service that I do on, you know, for, for love, you know. But I, I didn't put two and two to like, no, this is your thing. This is everything that I want you to build your whole life around. I didn't see it that way. And um, each, each time I did it, every, you know, two or three months, I'd get asked, man, I'd light up. I'd look forward to it now. Now I was like, oh, you want me to teach? You want me to teach? <laughs> yeah, please, right you know? <laughs> but, but God had put this vision in me about writing this book. So I got asked to teach the whole summer at the men's group. The guy wasn't going to be able to teach, so I had to teach the whole summer. And I was doing like 10 hours of prep every time I would go do these um, sessions. Two hour thing, but 10 hours prep. So I'm like, man, that's a lot of work. I said, well, if I'm doing all that work, why don't I just package all that up? into a book format. I'm teaching this stuff anyway. I'll just take the same thing I'm studying and just and I'm writing and just bring it over into this book. So I wrote the, uh, over the summer I wrote the book while I was doing that class. But I still did not see speaking as my calling, my profession, my number one thing that, you know, God had called me to do. I, I just thought of, you know, helping out. But once I got the book done, I had a bunch of, um, at that time, I had a bunch of cell phone accessory places, businesses running, but I wasn't passionate about it. I was making money on it because I was good with numbers. But, I, man, I hate it. I started hating it. You know, at first, I liked, you know, creating a business, and I did it, and, and they all first. I had multiple um, locations. But, man, I started hating coming in. You know, like, I was like, man, I can't wait to get out of here. And I was like, that's a sign. You know this. You ain't not supposed to be here. So I was like, I got to get out of here as soon as possible. But what do I do, right? I hadn't found myself yet. So... I finished this book and I said, you know what? I don't know what God has, but when I finish this book, I'm selling these and I'm getting out and I'm just going to step out in faith, not knowing, but I'm just going to trust them. And I did that. I sold it in November, January. I started doing the motivational videos to try to help sell the book because I'm thinking the book, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I'll do a couple of these videos and have fun with it. You know, I, I wasn't thinking global. I wasn't thinking this calling, but like, like I said before about the six or seven video in, man, 
um, aha moment. You could change the world, the world behind this mic. You don't need the politicians in Washington. You don't need the state legislature. You can do it from where you're at. You don't need millions of dollars. You just need God. You need that fire, that anointing, and the boldness to say, boldness to say what, what he's going to tell me to say. That's it, and I can change the world, man. So I started coming in there with a different purpose and started speaking with that fire. And like a video or two later, um, the champion video went viral. Millions all over yeah, on different yeah, channels. Yeah, yeah. And then everything just took off. And it was like, oh, I found it. You know, and it was like once it clicked, I think it really clicked when I was front of the mic and, and it came on me, you can change the world from this position. And then at that point in time, I knew, you know, okay, this is it. It was pretty quick too. That was 2000. That was 17, 17. beginning of 17. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like two years. That's it. Yeah, that's Almost it. That's now, it. Right? It was. It, it's, it's a long years, drive. Man. It's a yeah, long drive, but, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we yeah. talk about again, go back to your patience. You know, it took you your yeah. whole life to get to 2017. Exactly. You come out, you talk about. Tell me a little story about the the, the the rocket, your example. I think it's great. I feel like you are the example of the rocket. The rocket, yeah. The rocket exudes most of its its energy and, and gas on the way off the launch pad. That's where you know that's the struggle getting off. But once it gets into orbit, it has inertia and movement of its own. And the hardest part in building a dream, a business, or anything is getting that rocket, that dream, off the launch pad, you know? And the rocket fuel that's in it is a combination of your grind and your why. Because that rocket's potential, your dream's potential, is only equivalent to the why that's behind it. Why you're building that business in the first place. Because life is going to hit you. Some bumps and some some attacks and all this stuff. And if your why for starting a business or, or the dream or whatever it is that you're doing, playing sports or whatever, if that why is not strong enough, when life hits it, you will succumb to that and that dream will be dead on the launch pad. But if that grind is right and if that why is right, you can take that um, rocket and you can put that thing on Mars. And we know this to be true now, you know. So that's what's the uh, what's the end game for for Billy here? Uh, how far can you take this? Man, I'm. I'm, I'm just trying to live, else. live in the moment, this yeah. day to day, in the now, because that's where the power is right now. I had the vision, you know, um, to my mission is impact lives daily, whether that's YouTube, art, my creativity, the books, the clothing line, whatever it is. It's all circled around, and my impact in lives with whatever it is that I'm doing. If I'm doing that, I'm, I'm fine with it. But God is unfolding the vision one, one piece at a time, and right now I'm just really focused on getting the message out that I'm doing. Um, going out and doing these type of events, man, just one-on-one -on -one and trying to sow life. I know God's got the, the next stage, but right now I'm just trying to be uh, responsible and a good steward of this moment and this time and doing what I'm supposed to do. You know? And everything comes with it after. Oh, right, trust right, right, the right, process, right. right? As you why right. you grind and trust the process, it's coming. Right. I got this idea of what I call the blessed factory. It's a, a big office with everybody um, working there in different departments, doing different things to impact lives daily. Like maybe you have a TV team, a publishing team, a music team, all these different things, and they're all built around impacting lives in whatever way their gift is, whatever they're passionate about. If I got people that are passionate, okay, let's say you like graphic art and you want to impact lives through graphics, okay, it'll put you in that department, go do your thing. You know what I mean? Impact the world. And just building this thing called the Blessed Factory and everything comes out of it has some kind of love and um, encouragement and strength behind it. So that's my, my ultimate thing. And uh, also, Wallace Brooks University. Yeah, right? Yeah. Grind you, yeah. grind you, <laughs> grind you, that's it. Yeah, grind you. <laughs> you know, before I actually started um, the book and before I did this, I actually had another dream that God had put on me, but I believe I ran a little bit before, before time. Like I ran on, he gave me the vision, but I ran on my time and didn't wait. Um, it was called Blessed Buddies. What it was is a group of cartoon um, characters for kids doing what I do now. Like it was the soul life into them with, through principles like that I teach adults, but just dumbing it down a little bit for kids that they can understand it. It's called Blessed Buddies. And um, I tried to start that business, but that business required more people to be involved in more resources than I had at the time. Because I just coming out of the panic yeah. attacks with absolutely zero. Right, right. I had zero credibility in this because the last time people had seen me, was doing music. The last song I had, um, Papa, it was called Papa Pill. It was number one strip club anthem. Okay, <laughs> they missed me for seven years, and I show back up. Oh yeah, I got these cartoons for yeah. kids called Blessed Buddies, and they're looking at me like, bro, you done lost your mind. Like for real, I heard about you losing your mind. So like nobody bought in, and I and I was really hurt because I'm like, man, this is a great idea. Like, why is it not working? And then what I realized was, you know, they weren't buying me yet. I hadn't established the credibility yep. of me. So I was like, well, okay. Um, rather than complain and, and, and get bogged down in the stuff I don't have the resources, the artists to, to execute this idea yet, it's not a bad idea, it's just not the right time. 
So I look back to God and I say, wait, what now? And what can I do? And then he, he reminded me of the verse with Moses. Well, what do you have in your hand? Like, what, what, what can you do? I said, well, I can write. Write the book. I control that. I don't need resources to do that. I don't need anybody else to do that. I know how to sell one-to-one, -one, you know, just like the CDs. Instead of CDs, it's a book. So I, I'm in complete control of that. So I, I set out on that journey. And now I'm building the name to build this credibility. And when I get to the end, I'll come back to the, to the Blessed Buddies and we will do that dream. Yeah. You know, and it'll be a good story because I, you know, I started there, no support, no nothing. I put it on Kickstarter. I was trying to raise 20 grand to, to get the artist and to get the right uh, quality that I wanted to get. I raised like a thousand dollars. Yeah, none of the, you know, work, my yeah. mom and, and a couple of family members donated. And that was about it. <laughs> Nobody else believed him. <laughs> They're like, yeah, back, right? yeah, money, yeah, yeah man. Well, I pouted for a good, no lie, I pouted for a good two to three months. Like completely depressed, like, oh, I had this dream and everybody just, <laughs> done, you know, if I was selling uh, this, this rap junk I was doing about killing and popping bills, they would line up all day and pay $100 a ticket. But if I'm trying to help somebody, nobody, you know, I started get beating myself like that, yeah, you know? Is that the right choice? Right, too, right, right. But then I had to catch myself like, hold on, God didn't bring me out of this thing here yep. to have me pouting around here because somebody didn't, didn't get behind me, you know? If it was, if it was easy. Everybody Everyone would do it, right? right. So and now you got to grind, like, okay, right. this got to be easy. Okay, make me work hard, there must be a big platform waiting for me. That's right, must man. Must be big, something right. bigger. The bigger the struggle, the greater the destiny, man. And that's and that's what I was looking at. I, I'd learned in music, though, um, because I, in the beginning of my music stuff, I didn't have a hit record. Like, you know, where you just, where one record takes off and all the doors open up? I was good, but I never had that record, so I always had to grind. Like, nobody was opening yeah. doors. If I want a door open, I had to kick the thing open. So I learned, like, okay, expect that no one's going to get behind you. Expect that from the gifts. You'll never be disappointed and just grind. When they tell you no, big deal. They tell you yes, I get a little surprised. Like, y'all actually believe it? <laughs> so it's just about going out and doing the things every single day, the principles every single day, believing in the process. And, you're very and, humble. You know, you're very humble and feel like that is probably one of your most, uh, one of my favorite thing about you. You're so humble, but I feel like you maximize. Listen to your story about selling your CDs on the street and right. the grind that you maximize every, whatever it is, I'm going to go 100, 1,000 percent, 120 until yep. do I get there. If it doesn't work, okay, we'll try something else. Right, 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 right. And then now I feel like with all your, your life, you're just, you're peaking right now to, you know, the, the pad, I feel like it's the right one. Yeah, all these things were like practice runs to me. Like I got a bunch of different individual practice runs on things that I would be doing later on in life. So this time I was like, oh, I get a second chance. Because most time you don't get a second chance yeah. in life to do something. I felt like I left a lot on the table in the music, like, you know, as far as what I could have achieved. And it always bothered me in those seven years. I'm like, oh, I lost it. I didn't maximize it. You know, you beat yourself up. And then all along comes God with that second chance. Like, it ain't over. It's the beginning. You <laughs> yeah, thought that, that was, was the preseason. <laughs> yeah, now, let me yeah. show you what I can do. Wow. See, I had to get you out of the way, Billy. So now I can do what I need to do, right? So he comes in here and it's like, oh, I get a second chance. And then when things, opportunities come, I recognize what they are. And when pitfalls come, I recognize a little bit what they are because I've had that already. I said, oh, I can compare that to an event in the past. Oh, that's this situation now. I, see, I went through that, you know, 20 years ago. I understand. Or that's a pitfall. Don't go down that route because I done made that mistake. No sense making that one again, right? So it's like he's prepared me through those um, ups and downs of the, the old life. It's all a practice run for what I'm doing now. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm very, very impressed to meet you. And uh, one more, one more question. Then okay. we'll go. The uh, I, w I want to know about your what you're going to bring back to the the south. Uh, okay. your, your maniac that you talk about. But uh, tell me, your your numbers have always been important to you because your hat, you right. have the three, the star. You explained to me number seven. Uh, your dad passed now at thirty three. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all numbers in your life that's been you know connecting to you to, to God really. Right. Um, tell me what's your number one, like one of them that you can explain to us. Um. Like the seven in my brand, you know, I have, it's B7U is the name of my clothing. The seven, um, actually I have it on the, the design here with the seven. But inside the seven, we have the crown, as we mentioned. It's the three-point crown, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, the seven being the number for spiritual completion, right? It's in the, the center position between these two, representing God. If you put God in the center of your life, then you are blessed and unstoppable. Okay, and inside the seven, there's the cross for Christ. Um, there's a five point star at the bottom with each point representing a letter in the word grace. So that, that keeps me focused. Like it's like my vision embedded in a logo so that I never forget what I'm, what I'm here for, you know? 
So um, the seven is very important. And I put it in everything. I put it in even places it doesn't belong, like in the grind, you see. Yeah, yeah, but it's to yeah. remind me, like, okay, don't, don't you know. Right, you grind, but you grind with spiritual authority. There's a grind, right? And then there's a grinding with another kind of power. power. Right, right. So that seven in there, it, it, it's just symbolic to keep your mind where where it belongs. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So it just reminds me. Keep, keep focused. Stay focused. Because you know the number one reason for failure is broken focus. Because we can accomplish just about anything if we can stay focused and keep our mind on it long enough. But when we start getting distracted, social media, the Kardashians, all this stuff that the world keeps throwing at us, right? We get our mind off of where we're supposed to go. Then we begin to falter. But if we stay on it, one mind, one focus, one action, one grind, one team, one union, one vision, one core values, right? We, if we become consolidated and united, then we have that power to do whatever it is that God has called us to do. Yeah, you said uh, in one of your videos, you said focus equals power. That's you know, it. Equal, focus right. equals power. If you focus on one thing, all your energy towards one right. thing, all your decisions are easy to make because is it going to get closer to, right. to my one thing, my goal, yeah. uh, or not? If it's not, then you do what? Get rid of it. You, yeah, get rid of it. Only a positive thing. So so what, what are you going to bring back to, to the South after this? Man, uh, I came, came to Carolina and head back to Florida. Maniac, brother. <laughs> you now we do. There we go. I'm learning. I'm still learning that way. He's teaching it to me over here, man. That's awesome, man. Thanks for being here, man. It's a blessing really to have you. I'm really excited about today. And man, I appreciate the honor, so man. God you, man. bless you, brother. Thanks so much. Appreciate you. Blessed and unstoppable. Success starts with putting the right things into your mind. And my new book, Blessed and Unstoppable, was strategically designed to align your mind with the laws of success. This curriculum will teach you the inner mechanics required to go from average to phenomenal. From living a life with limits to being blessed and unstoppable. As you follow this guide step by step, amazing breakthroughs will happen. New doors of opportunity will open and favor will begin to chase you down. Blessed and Unstoppable is a 31-day devotional on the laws of success. This book will instigate the thought process and actions required to transform your life. Each day has a Bible verse, a teaching on that day's principle, a positive affirmation, a prayer for the day, self-assessment questions, success quotes, action steps, and a powerful inspirational message. Regardless of what field you're in, Blessed and Unstoppable is your blueprint for success. Get your copy at blessedandunstoppable.com. Also available on Amazon.